this beautiful relationship that we have with him, that he invites us into with him. Um, secondly, um, this song I just fell in love with this summer, um, and it's a song called um, Another in the Fire, and it's by Hillsong, and they, uh, this is just a beautiful, beautiful, like, way to remember all of the wonderful miracles and the way God has been so faithful to his people through the Israelites and through Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When you read, or when you listen to the chorus, it says this, it says, there was another in the fire standing next to me. It said, there was another in the waters holding back the sea. 
there's another saying in the fire that of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and how God, when um, says there's another in the fire, um, sorry, in the waters holding back the seas. Imagine that being in the place where God split the seas. Imagine being in that fire and being saved by the Lord. Those are so amaz- such amazing miracles that we have stories of. And that applies to us today in this way, is that God is with us in those fires. God can split those seas. God is with us no matter what. We're not going to be alone. We're never going to be alone because God is right by our side. There's a place where the heart is on fire Another way when the walls are closed When I look in the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There's another in the fire standing next to me. There's another in the world holding back the seas. Should I ever need? Of how I've been set free There's a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There's another in the fire Whoa. All my dad left the dead beneath the waters. I'm no longer a slave to sin anymore. And should I fall in the space between what reminds me of this reckoning? Either way, I won't doubt the things of this world. And I know I will never be alone. There's another in the fire that's standing next to me. There's another in the world holding back the sea. Should I ever need a life? Would power set me free? There's a grave that holds nobody, and now that power lives in me. There's another in the fire. Oh, there's another in the fire. Oh, there's another in the fire. Oh. Another in the fire. Whoa. I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between resting. I can feel the ground shaking beneath us. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. There is no other name the name of Jesus. He who was and is still, and will be through it all. So 
should come at bay in the space between all the things unseen in this reckoning. I know I will never be. I know I will never be alone. There's another in the fire that's standing next to me. There's another in the waters that's holding back the sea. And should I ever need remind of how good you've been to me? I'll count the joy come every bad Cause I know that's where you'll be All right, thanks guys. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, I, I kind of fell in love with that song this, this summer too. Um, and it really speaks to uh, this whole idea of not walking life alone and and uh, God being with us in the midst of, of everything, um, which is really important for us all the time, but certainly uh, I think important for us um, during this particular season that we're in. Um, when we began to uh, meet and talk about uh, a theme for this year, uh, it was it was many months before uh, the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Um, and, and we met several times over the course of several weeks and, and uh, we, we talked about, you know, what what is God wanting to do uh, on campus and what is God wanting to do uh, in and through our lives uh, for this this next coming academic year. And one of the words that, that kept coming back to us was transformation. And that word really stuck in our, our minds and it, it, we, we, we just kept coming back to that word transformation. And we talked about what it meant and we talked about uh, how God works in our lives and, and to make change in our lives. Um, and and we, we came to this place where we, we talk that transformation or change comes in so many different forms uh, and in different uh, times in our lives. It comes at different, different paces uh, for us as individuals. Uh, sometimes in my life, uh, transformation has uh, been very quick, very fast. Uh, most of the time, it's, it's much slower. It's much more paced out. Uh, in fact, sometimes <laughs> change in my own life seems like it's not happening at all. Um, but, but so we, we came and we settled on, on this theme, the, the title of transformation at the speed of life. Um, and, and, you know, playing on that transformation or change at the speed of light. Uh, but that, that life for all of us goes at such different paces. And, and when we began to look at scriptures, uh, as well, we realize that God from the beginning has is has been in the uh, the business of change and transformation, making making things new, making things right, making things righteous and and holy for Him, and and that uh, He He comes into life in different uh, ways and times, and the stories that are recorded in the in the Bible. Uh, we, we were drawn to those transformation stories, the transformation of, of women and men uh, in scripture that God has worked uh, in and, and how that change has, has come to pass in their lives. And, and so we decided that we were going to kind of take a look at that uh, through this, this year in uh, transformation at the speed of life. Um, the ironic part for me given that we, we talked about all this, we came up with this uh, uh, theme, we came up with the scripture, kind of the theme scripture. Um, the, the theme scripture we came up with is 2 Corinthians 3.18, and, and we've shared that in various uh, forums in the last couple of weeks uh, on campus in different ways, but I want to read it to you, and, and it thinking, thinking back, it's a bit ironic that this is the scripture that we uh, we settled on for our thing. 
2 Corinthians 3.18 says this. It says, And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we change, as we are changed into his glorious image. Um, not sure, I've, you caught the irony in that, I'm sure, right? And, and we all with unveiled faces. Uh, it just seems ironic that here we are living, living in this COVID world, living in, uh, on, on campus, and we are uh, wanting to veil our faces so much to keep each other healthy and, and uh, to protect each other. And, you know, we walk around and sometimes it's hard to, to know, are, are people smiling at you? Are they frowning at you? Are they having a good day, a bad day? Are they, uh, you know, what is the expression on their face? Because we're living right now in this kind of veiled, uh, masked time. And we need to do that. Um, but it just, it just, it was ironic that God knew and could see down the way that we were going to be talking about what it means to unveil, what it means to be transformed and changed into his image, and that we don't have to wear these masks uh, uh, spiritually at any rate any longer, uh, even though we need to physically for a while longer. So I'm going to just take a couple of minutes. I'm going to unpack this verse just a little bit and then kind of share where uh, we hope this chapel experience goes um, over the next several weeks and months. Uh, there are three phrases that jump out for me in the passage that we just read. Uh, they all go together. Uh, first is the one we just talked about, and we all with unveiled faces. Uh, the second that jumps out is uh, that we are being transformed or that we're being changed into the same image uh, of Christ uh, and that it's the Lord that makes us more and more uh, like him. And, and I think those are three uh, very important uh, phrases in, in that passage that, that we need to have a bit of understanding about. So we'll, we'll try to take a look at that. Um, I think in the passage, the writer of, of 2 Corinthians here, I think the goal, uh, to me anyway, is uh, to allow God to change us into him, his image as we journey uh, with Christ in this life of ours and, and allow him to do it at, at his timing, at his pace, uh, and, and walking beside us. Let me share a little bit of the backstory uh, about the veiled face might help us uh, a little bit. So the writer, he's, he's taking his original readers back to Moses. Uh, and Moses would, you know, he'd walk up the mountain, uh, Mount Sinai, uh, and, and he would meet God face to face. Um, to be honest, when I read that, it's, that would be kind of daunting, probably, probably uh, a little fear-inducing to actually see God physically face to face. And it was in this place that God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. It was in this place that, that God spoke and revealed himself to Moses over and over. And each time that Moses uh, went to meet with God on this mountain, he would come back down the mountain um, and he would be uh, uh, transformed. He would be glowing. He would be uh, shining or, or, or glorified. Um, and and uh, it was so remarkable, the encounter that Moses had with God on the mountain, that, that his countenance, his, his look, his appearance was literally transformed. It was altered. Um, and and when he, whenever that happened, Moses would look different. He would come down the mountain. Um, and the first time that he came down the mountain, the people, when he, when, when he got close, the people were afraid. And, and they said, you know, cover your face. We can't, we, we, you've been with God and we can't look upon you. The change was that significant in, in Moses, in his being in the very presence of, of God. And so Moses would wear a veil over his face, he would cover his face, he would cover that uh, every time that he came down from the mountain. Now, the interesting thing about that 
is that he, he wore this cover in a sense to protect the people, but to, to kind of cover the glory of God that, that uh, was coming out from him. But after a while, that glory would fade. It, it wasn't a permanent glory. Uh, it, it, it returned to him every time Moses climbed the mountain, he would come back down the mountain and the glory would fade. And, and the, with each step that he took away from the mountain, the glory would then decrease. So, so what, is, what is the author uh, saying? Uh, what is he saying to uh, people at the time? What is he saying to us in this day and age uh, about having unveiled faces? That, that, is it that when we meet with God, we don't have to veil our face, uh, that that transformation is, is permanent? And that it's something that uh, we, God wants us, that glory, that shine, that glowing to uh, be uh, coming out of us all the time. The, the writer seems to be saying to me that because we never have to leave the presence of God, we never have to come down from the mountain, so to speak, not, not, a, not a spiritual high mountain, but, but that presence, that experience, that place where God uh, uh, exists and lives, that we, we never have to leave that place, that we can stay unveiled now. Uh, it seems that the point that God wants us is to have the very image of his son Jesus on our face, changing into that image uh, on an ongoing basis. And, and that really seems to be his message in transformation. We can have a relationship uh, with God that even Moses didn't have. Uh, and Moses had a great relationship with God. Uh, uh, they, they were close, and, but we can have a different ongoing. We don't have to go to the mountain and come away, go back to the mountain, come away. We can have that relationship with God, being in his presence. Uh, that, that brings a purpose to our lives, that brings change to our lives, that brings transformation as we journey with Jesus. Uh, in life. Um, that, that, that glow, that image never has to fade. Uh, it's a change that's ongoing. And sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes that, that change is, is fast. Sometimes, sometimes the change in our lives is slow. Sometimes it seems uh, unperceivable, like there is nothing going on. Where is God? Um, but the promise is that the change is always happening. Uh, in our lives. And, and the point is that the Lord makes us more and more like him, the writer says. See, it's God who does the transforming. It's God who does the change. We, we don't do that. We simply open ourselves to, uh, to Christ, to his leading, to this journey. And it's God that does the transforming, the change. And it's, and it's not just a transformation of the past, but it's a transformation that's ongoing. It, it's something that happens to us and is happening and will continue to happen uh, in our lives. That God right now is at the, in the work of changing and transforming our lives. I have a personal belief that every one of us is on some sort of spiritual journey. And, and it doesn't matter if this whole uh, God and Jesus thing is new to you or is is foreign concept to you. Doesn't matter if you've been, you know, traveling with, with Jesus for, for many years. God desires to know us and to have us know him. God desires for us to walk with him like, like he did with Adam. It says in the scripture that he walked with Adam and, and Eve in the cool of the day. And he has that desire to walk with us, to transform us, to change us, at our speed of life, that wherever we're at in life um, is, is how God works uh, to change us into his image uh, at a pace that we can handle. So in a sense, it's transformation at your speed of life or our speed of life or my speed of life. Being changed into the same image of Christ. And uh, I'm going to share this, this, uh, this metaphor. It's, it's one that I'm sure you've known. It's, it's the word transformation it comes from the word metamorphosis. Uh, it, it means a, an essential or a core change in the nature of something. 
Uh, it's a real change deep down, not just a physical change um, on the outside. And, and it's the word, as you know, that's used to describe what happens to a caterpillar moving and, and becoming a, uh, something totally different, something totally changed as a butterfly. Uh, that this little wormy, creepy, crawly, insect, furry thing becomes this beautiful butterfly. We, we've all heard that, uh, um, that metaphor before. Um, the, the thing is, is that it's a natural process of transformation. And, and that's, uh, I think, what I want to leave us with today is that in this journey with Christ, in this desire that we have unveiled faces, that, that God is doing the transforming, the change of our, of our core being, uh, making us more like his son, transforming us into the image of Christ uh, in, in those dark places, in, in the fire, in the water, like Josh uh, led us in, in worship, that, that Christ is there with us. We're not alone. He's with us on the high spiritual mountain. When things are going really well, he's there. And in all those parts of life, uh, God is doing a transformative work. He's doing a change in our lives, whether we realize it, whether we can see it or not. So how is it that we understand this, this transformation that God wants to uh, do in our own lives? Um, I, I think one of the ways uh, that we can come to a better understanding, wherever we're at on, on the journey with God, um, is, is by hearing and understanding stories. Hearing and understanding what the Bible says about transformation. Um, and, the, and so over the next several weeks, months, we're, we're going to be looking at the, the transformative narratives of, of people in the Bible, how God worked in their lives, changed them, called them, empowered them, gave them purpose and a mission in life. We're, we're going to be looking at those. We're going to be hearing from some of our own campus uh, uh, peers and community on the transformative work of Christ in their lives. Uh, and so I'm excited about that. Something that I want us to do uh, each, each week uh, when we hear these transformative stories is to stop and to ask us these four questions. First, when, that, when we read that story, we hear that story, we ask the question first, how does this story affect my story? Does it? And if, if so, how? What, what is it that God did in the life of uh, that uh, biblical person, right, uh, of that time that can affect my story? Uh, second question, or very introspective, of where in my life is change needed? Um, and, and that's a question that only we can answer for ourselves. I, I can't tell you where change is needed in your life, and you certainly can't tell me where change is needed. Well, we can tell each other that, but, but where we really know it, uh, where is life, uh, where, where in my life is change needed? Third question I'd like us to ask is, how can my life look more like Jesus? Uh, that's, that's the point of transformation that the writer of 2 Corinthians is saying, is that we are being transformed or changed into the image of Jesus Christ. How can my life look more like the life of Jesus? And then lastly, a very practical question is, what are some next steps to help me make those changes? And so that's the, that's the challenge that I want to leave you with as we, um, as we move along. What are some next steps? Um, this semester, what are some things as we navigate this, this COVID world, uh, these COVID challenges? Um, I hope that you'll take advantage of, of opportunities that we have, opportunities of uh, virtual chapel opportunities to um, get involved in a Bible study on your floor, a Bible study with uh, your, your colleagues in your department. Um, I hope that you'll maybe get involved in a small group, whether that's on campus or, or maybe off campus, that you'll, uh, for, for you students, that you'll have a conversation with your discipleship coordinator, with your RA, get to know them and, and, and uh, let them mentor you in, in spiritual things. Get plugged into a church if you're not plugged into a church. It's so important uh, to, to stay connected, whether that's in person or whether that's virtual in church. 
there are just so many opportunities that we have uh, to help us on our journey uh, in transformation. So I'm going to close this morning. I just, I want to pray for us as we journey together in this transformation at the speed of life. So would you join me as uh, uh, I pray and as we close? Father God, we thank you for this moment in time. It's what we have. We thank you that you have joined us here. We thank you for uh, giving us the Bible that we can read and, and have a better understanding of who you are as it, as it describes at least partially uh, your nature and your purpose and your love for us. Help us to understand that. Father, as we leave this place and, and, and go our separate ways and, and go on with the rest of our days, uh, Father, I pray that uh, you continue to change us, that you bring to mind those areas that you would like to transform. And Father, that you would uh, transform us as a school, and you would transform us as, as a people uh, and individually, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you do the work and that we can come to you and live in your presence with unveiled faces, knowing that we are being transformed into your image. And we pray this in Jesus' name. God bless everybody, and uh, have a good rest of the day, and uh, hope that you have a good uh, Friday and a good weekend. God bless. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, John.